So this is the new camper van. Um, there's a solid deck for uh, 275 watt panels, giving 1.1 kilowatt uh, maximum, of course. So this is a shot from uh, above the bedroom. Um, you can see that the, the solar panels, I've taken all that top hat that the van had on and uh, I've just replaced it with four flat panels. Um, so uh, four flat panels that look like they need a bit of a clean as well. Um, it's the middle of winter here so um, I'll give them a bit of a clean uh, before I go off. So let's have a quick look inside and this is uh, all new now so or I should say yeah it is all new. So I don't know if you remember last time as you walked in here there was a big unit with the sink and everything well I've put all that over the other side and I've just put a bench in here. Um, this bit has remained uh, the same, so um, the shower is still the same, uh, the toilet slides out from here um, when it's not uh, in shower mode, uh, I've shown that enough on the other videos. I've now painted uh, this into a powder grey colour um, which makes it look really good. Uh, the fixed bed is there. This um, bench is new um, and what I've done in here is house um, some of the electric um, and this will be for food storage I think um, behind that form and grill. Um, let's, let's get this lot out. Should have got this out actually before I started filming. Um, one of those, I don't know how I got it in. So that's that's a new step um, to help you get in the van. Here is an old brush uh, that I'll probably put above, um, and this is a Foreman grill, electric grill. Right, now, so, what I've done different here um, is, let me just open this surf because I've got a surf in here which will nicely um, hold the, I was going to put a latch on the bench but I don't really need one with this surf, so that holds it up. So what I've done here, made a bench here um, and moved the electrics. So that's the uh, uh, circuit breakers for all the electrics. I've divided it as hobs, kitchen, water heater, lounge area, um, entrance and rear. So everyone is, is on a, its own circuit breaker. Next to that, uh, I fitted a, now a Renager 60 amp uh, DC to DC battery to battery charger and rather than do it with it when the ignition's on I've put it on a manual override so I can what I can do is basically if the batteries need charging I can start the engine up come back here flick the switch on uh, I won't do it now because the engine's not not on um, and that will then uh, send charge from the front battery and the alternator back to the battery bank uh, which is it's, that's going to be a game cham changer in winter definitely uh, the um, isolator f fuse that you see at the side is um, a link to the circuit from the front so if when when your van's been um, basically it's it's allowing my battery bank and solar panels to charge to the front battery because like if you're um, not starting the the engine especially in winter 
for a long time I can just um, connect that and now the battery bank and the solar ch solar um, is now going through to the to the battery at the front um, so it's that's that's going to be really good as well okay so that is that let's get this broom out of the way um, everything else is the same other than like I said I've painted certain cupboards just so that it all matches uh, the lino is new as well and this is uh, this is going to be good as well so um, coming in we have uh, 240 volt at the front we've got a 240 volt there for if you were charging a laptop or something um, and we've got a 240 volt over the kitchen area so the cabin to the um, front there is there then in this there's a huge locker here but I've just put a spare duvet up, up there but that goes the full length of the van um, as you can see in there so that will be great uh, storage as well as all that garage room at the back uh, you've got a fan here um, what's, what's to say about a fan um, the controls are here so you can have it on blown in um, out uh, there's a there's a fan at the back there over the back near the back doors um, so you can have a through ventilation it's exactly the same fan that you've got six cupboards uh, so three this side three this side and then you've got two at the front here um, for possibly food um, or whatever um, there's a charging point in the rear cupboard so if you want to put um, laptops on charge uh, or phones uh, out you know that are hidden from view you can put them on charge over there uh, for something a bit more convenient there's a charging point here a USB charging point um, so let's uh, let's go over what's what's been changed in the van so the cupboards the uh, the uh, over head lockers are left are left in sp in the same place the shower and the toilet are left in the same place uh, because that would have just been too much work to shift but everything else um, so the water heater uh, the propex gas heater that is still in the same place um, but things have changed so um, what we have is a kitchen area now which um, features this brilliant um, pine uh, worktop which actually was a pine table a five foot by three foot table that uh, I bought off eBay sanded down recut and everything and it's turned out really well uh, we've got a latch that lifts up there to reveal uh, the cooking surfaces so here we've got uh, a two burner gas hob LPG hob the fittings um, I keep under here in, uh, in a plastic case so they don't uh, rock about and things uh, and we've got a two burner induction electric induction hob which when um, the van is used in summer primarily I mean you could you can use it in winter but uh, it, you've got to know that you're going on a journey or something and you can get power back into your battery uh, if you know that then uh, yeah there's no no reason why you can't use the uh, induction hob uh, in the winter um, we've got the control for the Propex heater here um, I, I thought it was far enough away from the cooking surfaces and this Propex heater what I find is that you will probably have it on full most of the time uh, except when you went to sleep and then you might turn it down to halfway um, so that the the boiler would kick off uh, otherwise the heater will go full all night um, and you don't you don't really need that so uh, what I thought with this lift up um, top here is that it will protect the hobs 
because these are um, these are glass hobs, uh, so you've got to be careful what you do with them. But it will protect them during the day. But not only that, it gives you a great platform to put a laptop on here um, and uh, assume a standing position, uh, which is much healthier uh, than sat um, crouched on the bed, sir. So I thought, no, that that will work really well um, with uh, with doing a laptop. So between under this if we look at this cupboard now under the work surfaces um there wasn't really much room i could have maybe tried to squeeze a, a thetford gas oven in here but the problem was the um the space needed underneath for the sliding toilet the composting toilet um was such that you know it governed the kind of space that you you had to work with so in the end what i've opted for is um i already had a little electric oven and that little electric oven i can bring out of the cupboard put it on the work surface here plug it in there and uh if it's a pie or a quiche or a small pizza um i can do that I did think about putting um, a microwave here on the wall but uh, at the moment I've just left that space free um, for a couple of reasons. If you think about it, uh, when the cooker's in use, uh, you, you know, so you're boiling rice or pasta, you've got steam coming up here. Um, I, I, I didn't really want to put things here uh, per se, maybe something narrow. Maybe a spice rack, something like that might work. I have got the the fan here, so hopefully it'll draw the steam out. That's the idea. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought rather than put something up and regret it later, I'm going to leave that space free. Okay, um, so as well as that cupboard there, we've got a cupboard under the sink, which I'm going to use as a cutlery um, cupboard and odds and sods um, whatever we can kind of get in there so there's a cutlery tray in there at the moment and uh, we'll see how that works out as well okay so underneath the work surface here we've got controls for the induction hob and we've got controls for the water heater so this is an electric water heater and um, if you look over the other videos all the power and water um, and LPG all is, is exactly the same so this has got an LPG tank of 55 litres which equates to two large gas bottles um, it's about the same kind of gas maybe a bit more um, I, I, fitted, I fitted in the past a 28 litre gas LPG but with the big one like this, this means that you could really go off grid um, quite a while and not be hunting around like you see so many van lifers hunting around for LPG when, the, when they've run out. Um, so talking of LPG, um, actually let's just have a look at the controls. So the controls for the LPG are dead simple. Uh, this is a, a tank on and off switch. So you press it and... You see the tank, I went and filled up the other day, so the tank is full at the moment uh, and it means that you're not crawling about to turn your gas off or anything, you just turn it off here, which is super easy. Um, the other, uh, while we're on the instrument panel here, the other things are, um, we've got a battery monitor, so that's telling me at the moment, there's absolutely no sun at the moment, I've got the lights on in the van because it is so dark outside uh, what is coming in is um, well nothing's coming in really because we're using 0.8 of an amp um, to power the lights well the lights are 1.6 so yeah it's about 0.7 coming in um, on the charge uh, this is really useful though because it can tell you what you've discharged since you last reset um, and uh, it's really useful that's why I fitted it again um, moving on, we've got the solar controller that you see on everyone's vans. Um, this one um, just allows you to remote control 
the um, the solar controllers that are under all the gubbins there under uh, in the powerhouse section um, on this van I've got 700 watts of solar that are arranged um, there are four panels um, 175 panels each 175 watts each I should say so you've got two panels basically uh, running one into the other providing a 350 watt uh, dual system and to be able to so I've got two solar controllers to be able to monitor those and at the side here so I fitted um, I had this in the other van a switcher so I can basically switch between uh, the two different setups so uh, it will tell me instantly if I'm if one of the panels or one of the series is not working correctly or one's in parked in shade or something so as you can see that one is drawing what two a point two amps um, at 14.4 volts and the other uh, panels which is uh, crazy small is drawing 0.4 amps um, so they will when I've I've done tests in the summer um, or when the solar was shining um, will probably give you about between 40 and 50 amps which is uh, really useful so moving on we got the sine wave um, inverter this is a 3 kilowatt because of the big power things like the induction hob and uh, I didn't show you but this is where the water heater sits and there's the control thermostat you will probably leave that on economy most times because the water is hot enough uh, with it on economy with uh, the inverter I've fitted it's a three kilowatt inverter and the cabling that I've used is all doubled cable uh, so there's no no chance of fire or anything like that with the um, with the size of cable that I've used. Um, so the just simply to turn it on on and off, it's got two um, two modes. There's a power saver off, and there's a power saver auto, which basically means that if nothing is pulling asking for current, uh, your inverter. Uh, will save power so what I've just done then is turn the electricity on and you'll see because the fridge is coming on it's shooting up so 34 amps at the moment now that will carry on for it depends um, it, because the fridge hasn't been on for quite a while it may go on for a minute or something like that maybe more uh, but it will drop down to about, this fridge uses about 5 amps uh, when it's on. Um, so you can see that. Ah, you're just seeing it drop down to 7 amps. Okay, I'm going to change battery because in the camera. So you can see it's drawing 7 amps and it'll draw that for probably about 20 minutes. Uh, it's quite cold today so it should cool down fairly quickly. I'll just change battery in the camera. So as I was just talking, uh, the fridge uses probably, um, I think it uses about 30 amps a day. Um, it's, it's often good to talk in terms of amps when you're trying to work out the power usage of a van. So the fridge uses between 30 and 40 amps a day. Um, the lights probably use oh, 15, 20 amps, something like that. If you had a laptop, that would use stuff. Um, so I've kind of configured this van to use about 100 amps per day. I'm saving loads of power now because in the last fit, I don't know if you remember, but the fridge, there was a fridge freezer sat here. Um, now it, on the refit like I said the, this van is so much better now because it feels um, even though I've done it stealth it feels so much area um, there's so much more space you're not tripping over things um, I mean I have lost an L-shaped lounge uh, in the sacrifice 
but um, given how uh, tight the L-shaped lounge was, I, I don't actually think I've, I've lost anything really, especially with this bench seat here. Um, there's enough room to just, just sit around and uh, on the bed there as well, you can, uh, if, if you're wanting to sit around or, or lounge around, um, that's fine. So just, just finishing off the control panel, what we've got are two switches. One is for the fans for the composting loo, uh, which draws air out. And the other one is the pump for the water. And as I said, there's a charging point there for your phone or whatever, iPad. And here is the water meter. Uh, like I said, that on this, this van, the tank is huge. You probably wouldn't always fill it. The water. Um, so I'll give you a shot of the back um, of the van. It's uh, sl up on the curb here, so I'll have to hold this door open. Um, but this is a shot from the back now. So the fixed bed is in, and then you've got the whole um, garage space. So going from the bottom here, that white um, fascia is the amount of insulation uh, that's in the f in throughout the whole floor. So there's five inch of insulation. The black section just above it is where the water pipes uh, run um, from the tank outlet, which is here. You've got access. Uh, Beneath this this panel here, this short section here, just comes up. This is this pole here is for um, holding the doors open. Um, so um, yeah, the pipes run down here and along this side on the right side of the van from the back. Um, and as you can see. You've got the whole garage space, so there's no batteries. All the batteries and the tank are under this section um, here. Um, there's a fuse box which you can access from this panel here, just just at the side here. There's a 240 volt here. There's your blow up um, for the um, airbags here um, on the left side and the right side. The left one looks as if it's down and it's just because, again, the van is tilted at the moment. They're both the same pressure. Um, yeah, this uh, fixed bed's turned out really well. Over there in the corner, I don't know if you can see at the top, there's a heating vent so I can heat the garage. Um, I tend to have it closed, mainly, mostly closed. Um, uh, and this is just like a rubber uh, sheeting which would be nice and easy to clean um, I think for storage I'm gonna get tubs that I can just push in um, and pull out like I said I don't know if I said but this tank is a water tank is a 250 litre it is absolutely massive I've just filled it now to show you um, what's 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 what basically each one of these lights shows 50 litres so um, I don't know if you can see there, but the last light I put on was a red one, just to tell you that you're on your last 50 litres. But as you use the light, uh, use the water up, the lights will go off. Uh, so it's a, it's a really quick, easy way to tell how much water you've got in. I didn't fit a, a grey uh, water, a grey water tank um, meter. For the simple reason that um, you're probably going to, you, you know, empty that as you go along. Um, so I, I, I didn't think that there was a need to, need to do that. I think the, from memory, the tank for the grey water is about 50 litres, maybe, something like that. At the last MOT I got them to wear the van, and now with all the additions it's down to 3,100 kilos. So 3.1 tonnes, which effectively gives me 400 um, kilos to play with before I'm even overweight. But with the um, with the added suspension I've put on it, 
um, the van will never look down. So uh, if I show you the wheel arch, I show you the new tyres as well. Um, all uh, terrain tyres. So um, uh, if you notice, there's a, a, a snowflake on it. There, there's a snow there, and then this signal, this uh, marking here, that mountainside, uh, means they're all terrain. Um, so they're looking really good. Um, I'm glad I uh, sprayed the, I cleaned all the um, hubs up. I mean, it's a good wash the van, but um, you can see what's what. See that so now I've used the pine cladding throughout. I like pine cladding. Uh, my music studio that I've been in for 20 odd years uh, is all pine clad. I think it's, uh, for me, it's just a great, great feel. Um, I love the, the smell of wood as well. All I've done with this is a, a clear varnish. It's had about three coats um, and uh, looks really good. You've got reading lights. Um, so you've got four of these. One there, one there, one there, one there. Depending on if you're having to sleep the other way around. Um, while we're talking about the bed, the bed is five foot nine um, long. Uh, by I think it's five foot wide um, so it's plenty wide enough the height I'm five foot nine so uh, the bed is just about the right size for me you could could have done with a bit more maybe and I could have in hindsight maybe cut out panels um, that they do but as this van kind of um, as you can see it starts to encroach here um, I could have put a, maybe a bit more room but uh, will just uh, you just have to do if you six foot something then uh, if you bought this van then you'd probably want to do something with it uh, so you've got four lights strip uh, four lights there for reading uh, you've also got strip lights um, under the cabinets uh, I fitted these if you remember with the, the kitchen was here so you've got these strip lights so there's no point in taking them out the strip lights under the there and there's a strip light under this side as well um, that you can see there which adds a bit of mood uh, light into the place um, apart from that uh, bog standard kitchen sink stainless steel um, I think it's easy to clean easy to replace if you need um, so it's quite quite large although it doesn't look deep it's quite wide which um, uh, it will be fine for, for washing up and things doing your teeth whatever um, and so I think that's about about it uh,